the notification. Not everyone gets uh, the notifications. Right, so today's Wednesday, the 22nd of November, 2023. And um, is it cold where you are? It's getting there. It's in the 30s. Yeah. Do you get really cold weather? We do. We get snow. We get... Um, it gets cold for sure. I mean, it's not Canada cold, but it gets cold. It actually, cold. last year was the first year that it actually didn't snow. And I can't, probably since I was alive. Um, oh. But it does get cold. Um, yeah, well, that's uh, we, we don't get it quite as bad here. So um, anyone, drop comments. Let me know you're there. And uh, we're back with uh, part two with uh, Micah uh, to talk about the uh, Bible and astrotheology the mm -hmm. science of astrotheology so laura uh, so, i guess I, I introduced you to this topic what do you think of everything since you've had a yeah, couple days to think about it. it was really really good um obviously it's something that um i have to go back and watch again and you know take my time with it but i thought it was brilliant and you've got a whole youtube channel uh, and and website dedicated for further learning haven't you uh, hi everyone so just to let everybody know uh you're not going to micah's not going to go over anything he's already mentioned so you'll have to look at part one for a recap um we're going to just go straight into part two now um and the feedback from the last one was really really good really good i was I was impressed um, at the feedback I got. Obviously, not everybody's going to agree because you're looking at this from a completely different perspective. Um, but um, I thought it was brilliant. Outside the box thinking. Um, and it made it made a lot of sense, you know, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I was very uh, gripped and that's the feedback I've had from a few people as well, that they were really, really gripped and uh, really looking forward to the next one. So, hi, Murray. Um, greetings from Florida. Excellent. Right, well, let's get cracking. I'm going to pass over to uh, to you, let you take, take away, and um, please share the live and if you're enjoying it. And let's have a look. So, I'll go to the screen share, yeah? Yes, please. Here we go. Okay, we go. so shall, shall I just start? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so Laura, I just want to let you know is the way that StreamYard works basically is for me to be able to like go through this presentation. Um, I cannot physically see you because I'm not on that screen. I, okay. I'm just looking at my presentation. So I can't see you if you go like this or, or anything. So if you need to just, just interrupt me. Okay, wonderful. Thank you for letting me know that. That's no, uh, yeah, because no I can see you. I can see both of us. So right, right. If I were to go back here and go back to our live, now I can see us, but I can't control the PowerPoint. Yep, of course. Okay. So, but at least we okay. figured out the PowerPoint, right? I mean, you figured out how to how to screen share, and so that in the future, yeah, the brilliant people come on, they can uh, they can do the I'm same. I'm going to. I I think I'm going to look at investing somehow in a better computer so that I can do this more because I, I do like this screen sharing thing and you can uh, get more information mm -hmm. and uh, yeah anyway brilliant I'll let, so I'll let let's, you let's start let's get through because we have a lot of stuff to get through so astrology is a language if you understand this language this guy speaks to you that's Dane Rudiar now what I teach is something called astro theology but what I wanted to share with you at this point was this the holy bible is made up of different sciences. They're metaphysics, astrological. That's what I teach astrotheologically is one slice of one science out of all these sciences that are in the Bible. It is a heavy metaphysical book, an astrological book, an anatomical book, an alchemical book, spiritual, esoteric, and mythology. It is also a gematria, a numerology, an etymology book, and it's also a psychedelic book. There's 11 holy sciences in this. Each of them, you have to spend as much time as I have to be able to grasp it. There's more to learn inside the Holy Bible, what it's actually trying to tell you, than you could learn in a lifetime, and it's meant to humble you. This is a culmination 
of a ton of different esoteric sciences. However, the Bible, and this is where people get annoyed with me, it's not literal, it's not history, it's not reality, and it's certainly not original. So let's start with this. Um, for people who are uh, have read the Bible, what is the point of all of this that I've done? Well, we take for granted that we have calendars, clocks, watches, weathermen. The ancients didn't have any of that. They had sundials. In the Bible, they worked on dream interpretation from harvest. They had to know things. They needed to know that Taurus was when you put the plow on the bull and plant as above, so below. Because you see the bull in the heavens, you put the plow on the bull on earth. The Bible is an encoded farmer's almanac and was the knowledge of staying alive, the most important thing. They would look up at the stars and see all this movement and make stories up about them and pass them down to their children, then them to their children. Eventually they learned how to write and wrote them down and they evolved from Sumerian to Babylonian to Egyptian to Judaism in the Old Testament, then to Christians in the New Testament and even to the Quran. And I always like putting this quote in there, Laura. My point, once again, is not that those ancient people told literal stories and we are now smart enough to take them symbolically, but that they told them symbolically and we are now dumb enough to take them literally. That's John Dominic yep. Crisson. And that's basically what we've done. That's what it has. It's been dumbed down to believe it as a literal text. And um, they come up with things like apologetics to be able to explain like a talking donkey or the contradictions in the Bible because they're not reading it the right way. So now Jesus disappears at 12 and he comes back at 30. There's an astrological reason for that. It's been a subject of great debate, but the answer is quite simple, actually. What happens to a young Jewish boy at the age of 12? Technically the 13th year. He becomes bar mitzvah. He becomes a man. So Jesus becomes a man and leaves to study. He starts his ministry at 30. But why? The ancient Jewish religion has roots in Saturnalia worship before it. I'm going to get into the black cube. I'm going to get into, it's called the tefillin. I'm going to get into all of that. I'm going to show you how it's all Saturn worship. The earrings, the wedding rings, all of that. Where Saturn has rings. I'm going to get into that. And it's why their day of rest is on the Saturn day or the Saturday. So why 30? Saturnalia worshipers said that you were not allowed to become a teacher until Saturn came back to the point it was at when you were born. And it just so happens that Saturn takes 30 years to come back. So he disappears at 12 after the bar mitzvah, and he comes back when he's allowed to teach. This is Ezekiel's inaugural vision. In my 30th year, remember, that's a Saturn return. In the fourth month of the fifth day, while I was among the exiles by the Kebar River, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. So now check this out. If you look at this picture on the right, this is a very famous picture of Ezekiel. And then you're not understanding what they're showing you. I'm going to explain to you. When he turned 30, he saw God. Jesus started at 30. Genesis 32, 30. 30 represents uh, Jacob in the pineal gland. I'll get into that. How about this picture? To the right of Ezekiel is known as the tetramorph, that four-headed animal right there. It's a lion's head, a man, a bull, and an eagle. Well, that sounds very familiar, doesn't it? Doesn't that sound like the four fixed signs that we went over in Revelation? The four-headed <laughs> animal? Why are they fixed? Because they're fixed in their season. Leo is in the middle of summer. The eagle is the fall. The uh, or Scorpio is the fall. The, the eagle being the ascendant of Scorpio. Aquarius is the man. And the bull is Taurus, the spring. Next to the tetramorph is the zodiac. This is what it's showing you on the right. Now, you see God in the sun because God is the sun. That's what they, that's what they believed. It's sun worship. That's what Jesus is. He's the sun. Now, the sun tells the hour of the day. The moon tells the day of the month. The zodiac tells the month of the year. So where we're located in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy, there is a perfect celestial calendar that we have figured out. Where we're located, which is nowhere special in the Milky Way galaxy, perfect calendar. To me, that's a fingerprint of creation. That's a creator. That's a creator that did this. <clears throat> Moses goes up to get the Ten Commandments, and when he comes down, he sees them worshiping a golden calf. What's more likely? The Jews got run out of Egypt, even though there's zero evidence of that. Um, zero evidence of that. In fact, during the peace accords in 1977, this is what Anwar Sadat said to Menachem Begin, the Jewish president, or the prime minister at the time. The Egyptians kept meticulous records back in the day. They kept records of things that were unflattering to them. 
Whereas in our textbooks that we read, our history books, we're always the good guys. Every country says that they're the good guys, but they kept all their records. There's zero evidence of leaving Egypt, of the, of the sea parting and all that. However, the Jews got run out of Egypt. They couldn't even let the bread rise, which is why we have matzah to this day. They rushed to the desert with just the clothes on their back, but happened to carry enough gold between all of them, found welding equipment in the desert and built a giant statue, or it's a celestial metaphor, like everything that I've shown you so far is. The sun is the gold and the calf is the bull of Taurus. They were worshiping the sun in Taurus, whereas the Jews are the people of Aries, the ram. This is why the Jews blow the ram's horn during the high holidays, because it's Aries worship. So that's what it is. It's the sun in the age of Taurus. They were worshiping the wrong time period. So he breaks the commandments, which is where we get the phrase lawbreaker from, because he broke the law. Mm. <clears throat> now here you see Moses' staff scripture. The Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. So the people came to Moses and said, we have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord and you. Intercede with the Lord that he may remove the serpents from us. And Moses interceded for the people. This is important right here. The Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a standard. And it shall come about that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it will live. So he's telling you to put a snake and wrap it around a staff. Well, where do we know that from? Well, in the Greeks, they called it the rod of Asclepius. In the medical condition, right. in the medical industry now, they call it the caduceus. But it's actually influenced from the East. It's Kundalini. This is the Kundalini through the chakras. That's mm -hmm. what they're saying. In the year 1367 BC, well before Moses, Akhenaten established monotheism under a sun god in Egypt. Abraham, as the story goes, started the one true God belief, but that's just not true at all. In fact, during this time period, they have found plenty of fertility gods and goddesses dug up in current times that the Jews have made. In fact, Moses is a character who is based on two Egyptians, Akhenaten, who is the basis of Moses, and Tuthmosis, which is where he gets the name, hence Moses. The Egyptians kept meticulous records about their history even the things that were unflattering or painted them in a bad light. There is zero evidence in the Egyptian records of Exodus, of Moses, of the plagues, of the Red Sea parting. There is also zero mention of the Bible, in the Bible, of the pyramids or the Sphinx, which would be odd if they came from there. You would think that that would be such an important part of their history, considering the Jews supposedly built the pyramids, which is not true at all either. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Simply and always have been described the path of the sun over the ecliptic as the sun dances around the 12 zodiac signs. Mithra, born on December 25th, the Immaculate Conception. He is the sun god and Messiah. Twelve disciples accepted sins. Was killed, then resurrected, becoming God incarnate. The cult includes communion and baptism. Adonis, born December 25th, Greek god of fertility, a.k.a. Babylonian Tammuz, a.k.a. Syrian savior. He was killed and buried, resurrected three days later. Dionysus, born on December 25th as a result of the Immaculate Conception. Greek god of winemaking, a.k.a. Bacchus, a.k.a. savior and liberator of mankind, naturally with communion. Osiris, born in late December to a virgin. Egyptian sun and underworld god, a.k.a. judge of the dead, a.k.a. one of the Egyptian trinity. Remember, um, let me see here one second. You had different sun gods because Egypt was such a long time period. You had Osiris. You had um, Horus later on, who was the sun god. Um, mm -hmm. Horus's enemy was Set. So basically, Horus would be in the sky because they would they would look in the sky and they'd say, where's Horus? Because they were able to tell the time based on where the sun was located. <clears throat> where's Horus? Set sends Horus into the underworld for 12 hours or into the lower su southern hemisphere. Which is yep. why we have a sun set to this day, which is where the sun is chased underground. Mm. You also had Amen-Ra, who was a solar deity during the Egyptians' time. And when you're in church or you're in temple and you say the word Amen and you think you're giving praise to God, or so the Jews will say that it means, and so it shall be, 
That's not the case at all. You're actually giving praise to Amen Ra. <clears throat> Horus, born December 25th to Isis as a result of immaculate conception from the spirit of Osiris. God of the sun and the light, one of the Egyptian trinity, embodied the resurrections. Uh, God is sun. December 25th is the day of the resurrection of the sun. Do you remember when I told you that the sun walks sideways for three days in the summer and it walks sideways for three days in the winter? The sun rises a degree on its axis after being dead for three days on December 25th. Yep. This is why all the gods, all of them, all of them are born on December 25th because that's the day that the sun is born again, the light of the world, the one true savior. Well, of course the sun's a savior. How are you going to live yeah. without it? You'd be dead in nine days. So these are all different stories that amount to the same story as Jesus being born. What I'm trying to show you is, is that they are the exact same story. They just changed the names and the story a little bit. They're telling the story. Every ancient science, every ancient, every ancient holy civilization is telling the same exact story. And it's the sun going through the mythology of the 12 zodiac signs. You know, it's being born on December 25th. It's being raised, the Passover, it's being celebrated. It's heralded on the summer solstice. Then it's going to be judged in Libra, betrayed in Scorpio, remember the kiss? Yeah. And then yeah. in December uh, 21st, that's the day the sun dies because it's at its lowest point, remains dead for three days, and then comes back to life December 25th. They're all telling you the exact same story. Now, in chapter 125, the Egyptian Book of the Dead, the Declaration of Innocence between the Gods of the Tribunal, O Swallower of Shades, who came forth from Karnet, I have not slain people. Well, in the Bible, that becomes, Thou shalt not kill. O Doubly Evil One, who came forth from the Buserite Nome, I have not had intercourse with a married woman. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's wife. O He who prospers the common people, who came forth from Asiyot, I have not cursed the God. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Three of the Ten Commandments are mentioned here in chapter 125. All of them are mentioned in the 42. It's not the 42 negative confessions of Mount, actually. It's the 42 positive affirmations of Mount. It's actually not the negative confessions. But you could find all the commandments. The Bible is not original. How about El Lazarus? We're talking about Lazarus being raised by Jesus. El Lazarus is Osiris, who Horus raised from the dead. The Greek name Lazarus equals Eliezer in Hebrew and means whom God helps. It is a strange coincidence, firstly, that the person whom Jesus resurrects happens to be named whom God helps. And secondly, that Eliezer are breaking down its original components in Hebrew. Elazer closely resembles a combination of the Semitic word for God, El, with the Egyptian name for Osiris, Osir. The, the idea that Jesus wrote Lazarus, uh, brought Lazarus back from the dead is an Egyptian concept, literally by name. Now look at this. This is important. The ancient Egyptians used to worship the sun in the Taurus. And on the left, you could see the hieroglyphs of the bull with the sun between its horns. It's telling you it's worshiping the age of Taurus. The Jews are the people of Aries. That's why they blow the ram's horn to the sky during the holidays. The Christians are the people of Pisces. That's why they have the Jesus fish as shown below. Well, this is two intersecting circles, and this forms the Jesus fish. But you can also put uh, the tail on the top of it. That becomes the two fish, right? In John 21, so Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Do you know why 153 is such a um, specific number, why they did that? Yeah. Because yeah. if you look at the Vesica Pisces, again, Pisces, the two fish, the two fish that I just show you, the red in the middle, the yeah. mathematical equation of that is 247 over 153. They embedded sacred numerology into the Bible too, because I told you the Bible was also a numerology book. There's a reason mm. things are done like this. This is an esoteric, brilliant book. Now, the Egyptians were the people of Taurus. The Jews were the people of Aries. The Christians were the people of Pisces. <clears throat> we're coming into the age of Aquarius right now. And would you look mm. at that? One world religion headquarters set to open next year. 
because we're in a new zodiac age. There must be a new religion unless we expose this and get away from it. So people understand what they're actually looking at. Otherwise, there's going to be a new religion. Now, we're in the beginning of Aquarius or we're, we're about to enter Aquarius. Um, and we're, we don't really know what that's going to look like. But this is the kind of stuff that needs to come out. Mm. Now, here's the Synod of Jamnia. I like talking about this. Because the Synod of Jamnia in Palestine fixed the canon of the Bible for Judaism, which followed a long period of flux and fluidity and controversy about certain of its books. Christians came to call the Old Testament. Now, the reason I screenshotted this particular one, because people always, always, always ask for receipts and, and, and sources and all that because they can't, they can't comprehend. Um, this was actually a screenshot from the Encyclopedia Britannica. So what this is saying is the Synod of Jamnia in 100 AD, 100 AD, the Old Testament wasn't canonized. The books were all over the place. Things in nature where the Old Testament, for example, the, the, uh, the book of Genesis, you think that's the first book? It's not. It was put there. The oldest book in the Bible is the book of Job. And I went over Job and the astrotheology mm -hmm. in it in last time, if you guys want to watch it. However... This is when they put it together. Now, something interesting happened, Laura, because at 100 AD, 30 years prior to that, around the time of the destruction of the Second Temple in Israel, um, a gospel had come out. It was the Gospel of Mark. Mark is the oldest gospel. And during the Synod of Jamnia, the rabbis and um, the people who were putting this together actually debated whether or not to put the Gospel of Mark in the Old Testament. Okay, so the book is not divine or placed in a certain no. order by any means. Yeah, exactly. So now look at Genesis 32, 30. Remember 30, 30 is the Saturn return. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I've seen God face to face in my life is preserved. Well, Peniel is Pineal. This is the Egyptian eye of Horus. This is a sagittal cut on the right of the pineal gland and the corpus callosum. The eyebrow is the corpus callosum. Now, the interior of the pineal gland has retinal tissue composed of photoreceptor cells and is filled with vitreous fluid, just like the eyes. It's actually physically wired to the visual cortex. In certain reptiles, it has a cornea and a lens. Now, what's in the pineal gland? It has calcium carbonate crystals. They change in pressure. It's the piezoelectric effect. What that basically means is if you were to take the juice from the pineal gland and you were to dry out the crystals and you were to put it on a table and you were to smack it with something like a hammer, for example, colors would shoot out of it. Okay. The rainbow and everything wow. the colors are embedded into our pineal gland, our third eye. DMT is released twice in your life. The first, well, it's released multiple times, but only on two occasions. Number one is when you're in deep REM sleep, it causes you to dream. And the other wow. time that DMT is released is when you are, your body is shutting down and you're dying. It helps bring you into the next realm. That's what it does. That's why people always see visions. That's why people always see visions. For example, they'll see Jesus. Jesus is an archetype. He's a stand-in. You'll see family members. That's not really them. These would be angels. These would be things that come as, 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 as positive things in your life to calm you down, to make you ready to pass. Now, here's a really interesting thing. In many Buddhist traditions... 49 days is the total mourning period with prayers conducted every seven days across seven weeks. The Jews have a 49 day time period too. It's called Lagba Omer. It's when you count the Omer, it's a 49 day time period. The Catholics have a 49 day time period too. Oh, the Jews also have what's known as a Jubilee. That's 49 years. What is it with this number 49? Well, the <clears throat> Catholics have a 49 day time period called the Pentecost. That is when the Catholics get everything done. You get your um, your confirmation, your communion, all that. That usually starts after Easter. It's a 49-day time period. So what is so ex impressive about this 49-day time period? Remember, if you look at the Eye of Horus, it's the pineal gland. They knew the importance of this before modern science, so we think. That's what they knew. What happens at 49 days? Well, in... Um, when women are getting an ultrasound done, on the 49th day, that is the day that the pineal gland becomes visible. That is the day that the soul enters the body. 
on the 49th day. They all knew this. This is all embedded into this. Now, here's the interesting thing, too. A lot of religious um, in America, a lot of religious um, politicians are trying to ban abortion at six weeks. That's 42 days. But why mm -hmm. six weeks? Why not five? Why not seven? Why not 10? What, what's so special about six? It's because the people at the top understand this science. And they understand that if you were to lose your child or have an abortion before the pineal gland is formed and the soul enters, if you were to have that before, you are not karmically responsible for that. Right. Okay. That's why they're doing this at six weeks because everything is spiritual is what I'm trying to get to. So now we're going to start talking about some things that actually scare the religious people. And I'm going to debunk that. Hell is the flaming inferno, right? That's a place where your soul goes to burn for all eternity. Um, <clears throat> it's basically where your soul goes to burn for all eternity. If you don't believe in Jesus or if you don't, if you're not a good person, but let me ask you a question, Laura. How do we detect pain in the human body? How do we detect pain? Oh, on on our nerves. Oh God! Uh, if you're dead, you've got no nerves. Now, nervous system: the brain, the spinal cord, the nerve endings, the neuron. Yeah. This is yeah. brain, actually. It should say brain, but whatever. I'll leave it. Um, so this is <laughs> this is interesting because when you shed all of this all your your ways to feel pain how are you going to feel pain this is the thing everything that they do is spiritual they either invert it and pervert it or they leave it as spiritual hell is actually winter on earth and i'm going to explain that to you the idea of a fiery pit where you burn for all eternity is ridiculous when you think about it logically hell is actually winter on earth why well it's cold the vegetation and beautiful flowers and plants are dead the trees shed their leaves and bear no fruit. It is freezing cold out. People tend to get sick more often. Dangerous animals, if they're not hibernating, are starving and scrounging for food. It's dangerous for humans. Hell is winter. The Italian word for winter is inverno. If you flip inverno. a letter, remember, flip it slightly and pervert it. Inferno and pervert its meaning, you get the concept of hell. On the right is a picture of Dante Alighieri's The Divine Comedy. Satan is in the bottom level of hell. And what does it look like to you? He's frozen up to his waist in a frozen tundra because the metaphor goes that his wings were flapping so hard. Every time something starts to thaw out, it refreezes much like an igloo. That's how an igloo stays warm is because the fire in the igloo burns or, or, or melts the top of it, but then the snow refreezes it and it becomes a very, very strong shield. And the Bible even says this. See, Dante knew hell was winter. And the Bible even says this. There will be gnashing of teeth. Well, when do you chatter your teeth, Laura? Is it in the cold or yeah. the heat? Yeah, in the winter. They and winter it. is hell for winter, many of winter us. Winter is hell. Okay? You're not going to burn. You're, you're not going to sense pain without nerve endings. There's just no way to that. Now let's go to Satan and Lucifer. Satan does not exist. He is not a red devil with a tail and a pitchfork. In fact, the earliest paintings of him in the 900s, he was actually blue. Hence, in America, there's a good college basketball team called the Duke Blue Devils. And they are a religious institution, too. They're not a Jesuit one, but they are, I forget what denomination they are, but Duke is. The Hebrew word for Satan is Hashatan, which literally translates to adversary. The Christians will later give him the name, the Accuser. In proper context, two competing sports teams are Satans to one another. That's all it is. Lucifer, he is known as the light bringer. In Genesis 1-3, and God said, let there be light. But how can there be light without the light bearer, the light bringer? Lucifer is immediately mentioned in the Bible, if not by name, but by action and purpose. Lucifer is also known as the morning star. Mm. The morning star is also known as the planet Venus. And the reasoning is that if you go out and look at this, you can literally do this tomorrow. Go out and look at the sky if it's clear. In the morning as the sun is rising, you'll see a bright light above the sun. It, the bright light, you'll see it, and then the sun follows it. That's Venus. It announces the arrival of God's only begotten sun, the light of the world. Lucifer is also known to have a pentagram. That's his symbol. Continuing with Lucifer as Venus, if you follow Earth and Venus's orbit around the sun in a year's time, 
they almost connected five points. You connect that, you get the pentagram. This is what it looks like when the Earth and Venus almost connected five points. It makes a pentagram. This is Lucifer, Venus. This is the pentagram of Lucifer. In fact, a lot of Christians are scared of the pentagram. But did you know that in its original sense, in the beginning of Christianity, the pentagram was a symbol for Christ? It was. You have the five points on this. It was the five points of infliction on Jesus, the crown of thorns, yeah. Yeah. the two wrists, and it was the wrist, not the hands, by the way. It was the wrist. So whenever you yep. see him with holes in his hands, that's not true. If someone were to be crucified with the hands, what they would do is their body weight would actually pull the nail all the way through and they'd fall forward. So they did it through the wrist. So you have the crown of thorns, the two wrists, you have the spear of destiny on the side, and you have the feet. So those are the five points. So now let's talk about Baphomet. So this is a picture of Baphomet on the right. Notice Eliphas Levi's name there at the bottom. He was the occultist. He was the first person to invert the pentagram down. And the pentagram initially, I could talk about the pentagram for days, but the pentagram, when it had one point down, represented winter, and two points down represented summer. And if you look at the Baphomet, he has a goat's head. Well, the goat is Capricorn. And the man, the body of the man, is Aquarius. Those are connecting signs on the Zodiac. In fact, he has breasts, too, because he is a hermaphrodite. It's the idea mm. of the god, the male, the female energy. This, is, this goes back deep. This goes back far, far, far back. The Jewish star of David, the male, the female. It's a, pen, it's, yeah. it's, it's a hermaphrodite. The ancients knew the divine was both masculine and feminine. <clears throat> it's why Baphomet has breasts. It's not a demonic entity. It's the joining of male and female. Just like the next slide. So what did we do already? We, we, we talked about hell. We talked about Lucifer, Satan, Baphomet. There's nothing to fear here. People just don't understand the history. This is the rudimentary phallic symbol on the left, the original penis, so to speak. It is known as the spear. Then on the middle, it's the rudimentary sign of the womb, the chalice, the feminine. This is the Star of David. It's the joining of two. It's a hermaphrodite, so to speak. There's more sex magic in the Bible than you think. Oh, there's, wow. sex, there's sex magic in the Bible. This, what you're looking at right here, is if I were to take the Bible describing Solomon's temple and were to build it out, this would be exactly what it looks like. I'm going to explain it to you. But first, I need you to do me a favor. And tilt yeah. your head 90 degrees. What this way? Yeah. What am I looking at? <laughs> this is a view of Solomon's temple from above. It's important to note that Solomon is not the name of a person. It's a combination of three words for the sun. They're only talking about the sun. Sol, or sun in Latin. Om, which is the sun, which is the light of the syllable Om, as advised in the Upanishads, which is an Eastern book. On was the city of light in Heliopolis, Greece. The city was called On. It was Heliopolis. This is why when you go into a light, into a bedroom, you have to turn the lights on. Because it was yeah. the city of light in Heliopolis. This was created using sex magic. If you turn your head so that the two, um, two Jacob and Boaz, are at the bottom, you can see this. Jacob and Boaz represent the testicles from this view. The porch is Which the way am I meant to go? Am I turned to my left or my right? I don't know. So the two dots are meant to be at the bottom? Yes. Right. Okay. <clears throat> this was created <sighs> using sex magic. Jacob and Boaz represent the testicles from this view. The porch is the base of the penis. The holy place is the shaft. The holy of holies is the head. The arc or the hole of the penis is where the DNA information or the Torah is stored. The store chambers represent the female womb, and the two entrances to them represent the fallopian tubes. This is a worship of, of creation right here. Solomon, or Sol Olman, three names for the sun, and this is a penis entering a vagina. <gasps> okay. Oh, I can that's, see it now. <laughs> that's Sol Olman's temple, and now you'll never unsee it. Too. I can see it now. <laughs> right? Oh my god. Isn't this wild? Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah, talk about now I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about Samson and Delilah. Oh my god, that was my favorite film when I was a child. 
Samson, Samson. Let me let me explain. Uh-huh. This yeah. Samson is in Hebrew is Shimshon, which means little son. Whereas the root of Delilah is Lila, which means night. When you say goodnight to someone in Hebrew, you say Lila Tov, which if you literally translate it, it means night good, but it's actually good night. What is the story of Delilah? She and Samson. She cuts his hair, or she helped get his hair cut, which takes away his power, and he ends up eyes gouged out and blind. This is a story of the son, Sim Shimshon, Samson, how it goes away at night and he becomes blind. People become blind from Delilah the night. This is the night taking over the sun. It's the eternal battle between the sun and night or set from the ancient Egyptians. That's why we have a sunset, as I mentioned. Jonah in the body of the whale. In Hebrew, the words are Dagadol, which translates to great giant fish. He's in it for three days. It's the three days you see recurring in the Bible over and over again. The sun walking sideways like the crab for three days. Daniel and the lion's den. It's a story revolving around two signs in astrology. Daniel the man, Aquarius, and the lions, which are Leo the lion. In the zodiac, they're opposing signs. Abraham and Sarah. Abraham's name was Abram before he was made Abraham. Um... Abram, Abram is a combination of two words, Abba, which means father in Hebrew, and Ram, which means Ram, father, Ram, father of the people of Aries, the Jews. Abram actually goes back to, again, the east, which is Brahma, and Sarai, or Sarah, goes back to Sarah Sweti. These were influenced from the east. Lot and Lot's wife in Sodom and Gomorrah. In the ancient times, people were paid with salt. It's where we get the word salary comes from, the salt, S-A-L. Why? Well, it preserved the meat. We don't have refrigeration back then. When you killed a cow and didn't eat it in one day, it would go bad. Salt kept it viable for longer. There was no refrigeration back then. Salt was the highest currency outside of gold and silver. So when she turned into a pile of salt, you have to think about it, kind of like leaving Las Vegas, gambling, hookers, drugs, debauchery, turning back to the city to take one more look, and turning into a pile of money. It's a metaphorical story. They didn't really turn into salt. I mean, people are going to go, yes, you know, humans are basically, I mean, we're basically all salt and proteins. That's all we are. But that's basically how you're supposed to look at this. Now, the next one is going to be really interesting. There is a town in Israel called Megiddo, which a third century church was found under another church. This is the 200s. This is 125 years before Constantine united everyone under literal Christianity. It's one of the oldest churches known to man. In the center of the floor is the mosaic of the two fish Pisces. You see that? Because they knew Jesus was the solar deity. Megiddo is also the root word of Armageddon, which is where the war on the earth and rapture is supposed I can't remember if it's supposed to begin or end. Um, you guys can leave comments and remind me. But it's either supposed to begin or end in Megiddo. And look at this, the mosaic, it's the two fish, because they knew Jesus was the solar deity of the Piscean age, which is what we're leaving now. Look at this, the zodiac surrounds in the Vatican, the Stufetta del Babiena, the papal bath. They know this. They don't want you to know this. America was not founded as a Christian nation. For all the talk that it's a Judeo-Christian country, it's not. And the, these are our founding fathers in America, by the way. And the day will come when the mystical generation of Jesus, by the supreme being as his father in the womb of a virgin, will be classed with the fable of the generation of Minerva in the brain of Jupiter. Thomas Jefferson in a letter to John Adams. What influence have, in fact, the Christian ecclesiastical establishments had on society? In many instances, they have been upholding the thrones of political tyranny. In no instance have they been sent as the guardians of the liberties of the people. James Madison. The purpose of separation of church and state is to keep forever from these shores the ceaseless strife that has soaked the soil of Europe in blood for centuries. James Madison. And this is Thomas Paine, by the way. This is my favorite. This is 300 years ago. 300 years ago this was written. The Christian religion is a parody on the worship of the sun in which they put a man called Christ in the place of the sun and pay him the adoration originally paid to the sun. Our forefathers and the ancients knew this stuff. Like I said in that quote before, it's not that we are smart enough to take things uh, symbolically. We're actually dumb enough to take them literally now. 
What about the swastika? People get all hard, hard bent on this. The swastika, if you read from Wikipedia, for example, talks about its origin from old and ancient times. From ancient religions, it's peaceful meaning. Again, remember, you tweak it a little and you pervert the meaning and you get the modern day peace that we will never reclaim as a peaceful symbol. But the swastika is further than that. The swastika isn't Buddhist or Hindu. It's not Babylonian or Syrian or Sumerian. It's actually, guess what? Astrology. This is the oldest swastika that we've found. It is 17,000 years old and it's from Ukraine. So what is the swastika? The Big Dipper rotating around Polaris, the North Star, on the solstices and the equinoxes. Do you see the swastika? Mm. It's astrology. Everything goes back to it. This is what happens when you Google when Saturn was discovered. It says, 1610, Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei was the first to gaze at Saturn through a telescope. To his surprise, he saw a pair of objects on either side of the planet. He saw the rings. But that's not true. No. That's not true at all. Because we know that the ancients worshipped Saturnalia. And I'm going to go into the Saturn worship now, too. Julian the Apostate, 1700 years ago, uh, we think that Copernicus discovered heliocentrism. That's not true. Julian the Apostate was the nephew of Constantine. And when Constantine died, Julian tried to bring everyone back to sun worship. The original Christians, before Christianity started, really catching on in 325 AD with the Council of Nicaea, they were called heliognostics. Helios means the sun. Gnosis means knowers. They were sun worshipers. Julian tried to bring people back to it. And for his pain, he ended up getting an arrow shot in his back. We call it friendly fire now. When someone from your own side kills you, because mm. they try and play with the words, that's what happened to him. But 1,700 years ago, you can buy his books. His books are still available. He talked about how the sun was the fiery chariot that the planets dance around. So they're not even telling you the truth about your own history. And what's his name? Julian what? Julian the Apostate. Right. Julian the Apostate. His books are still available and you can read that quote in them. Now let's talk about Saturn worship. Saturn, at the very top of Saturn, there's a storm system that looks like a hexagram. The black cube goes in the middle. That's why it's all black cube. Here's the Jew on the top left worshiping the black cube. Here are the Muslims on the right worshiping the black cube. When you graduate, you worship the black cube. That's why you have a black cube on your head. The Nintendo Black GameCube. This is literally called the Sega Saturn. It's a black cube. This is the robe of the priest. Of, of um, When I say priest, I mean this is a judge's robe because yeah, they're yeah. priests of Saturn. In fact, Saturn is why you wear earrings because the, the Saturn had rings. So the ancients used to tell their women, get your ear pierced because you need to listen to your God. You need the rings. That's why you have wedding rings. Because you had to pledge your fidelity in front of your god. Your god was Saturn. Saturn was L. Saturn was L. That's why all the names, Michael, Raphael, Raziel, um, Michelle, they all end in L. It's Saturn. This right here, what you're looking at right here, <clears throat> is Goleki Tepe. And this goes back 13,000 years. They've excavated, excavated it. And there's a section in the middle of it that was an astrological, astronomical observatory. This is Stonehenge. It's the same thing. That's why people mm. go there on June 21st. They worship the sun. Now here's the Sphinx, right? The Sphinx is interesting, too, because they tell you that the Sphinx was made, what, 4000 BC or whatever? That's not the case at all. Because what happened is they excavated the Sphinx. In the 1800s, Napoleon... Can't, was it the 1800s? I can't recall. But Napoleon came across um, Egypt, and they took what's called a daguerreotype. It was in the 1800s. And they took what's called a daguerreotype. A daguerreotype was a slow exposure, early type of photography. It was black and white. Um, and what they did was they took a picture of it, and just the head was basically sticking out. It's a miracle we even found this thing to begin with. Thousands and thousands of years of sand moving it. They excavated it. The back of the Sphinx is smooth. Now, you would think that if the Sphinx was hit with sand over and over again, it would be like sandpaper. It would be or not sandpaper, but it would be very coarse. But it was smooth. Mm. But what happens is 17, um, I'm sorry, 
Uh, 12,000 years ago, we had the Ice Age. It was melting. It was melting. And water rushed over it for thousands of years. It is that old. In fact, the Sphinx is the lion, basically. It's the body of a lion. It's the head of a man. If you look at the Sphinx and you look at where the Sphinx was facing and you rewind the clock back 12,000 years, the lion was facing the constellation Leo, which is the lion. It was celestial worship. This is the pyramids that they tell mm -hmm. you were made in 2600 BC or whatever. They line up perfectly with Orion's belt. This is an instrument that they couldn't figure out on the right. It's called the Antikythera mechanism. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. But basically, when they figured out what it was, it was an ancient celestial tracking computer. Now, I'm going to start at this point showing you how astrology is used against us, if you'll allow me. Yep. Okay. Do you have any comments so far, by the way? Um, there are a few. Uh, I think um, there's just people tag in. There's uh, positive and negative, as uh, expected. Um, hell is a fabrication from Vatican. Hell is thrown into the lake of fire and is no more. Um, some people say that you do get a life review when you pass over, but it's not hell. It's just you having reflection without judgment. Go to the Temple of Secrets for the real truth within the temple. And there's a link. Um, and one gentleman is saying that he would love to have a discussion to rebut some of this stuff. So far. You can reach out to me. My website is Debunk My Work. I have not had a conversation about anyone that could debunk this stuff in four years. That's why I titled my website that. If he goes to debunkmywork.com, there's a section at the bottom where he could send me a message. It goes to my email. Yeah. And do you do you think we did have an ice age? Oh, yeah. Right. So let me show you how this basically works. When yep. you kill John F. Kennedy, November 22nd, that's the handover date from Scorpio to Sagittarius. Scorpio being the betrayer, he was betrayed and dies in Sagittarius because the sun dies on December 21st. It's January 1st, New Year's Day. Neil deGrasse Tyson has gone on record saying that nothing special happens on January 1st and December 31st. He's wrong and I've tried to call him out on it. Something interesting happens. It's our new year in the world. Because at midnight on December 21st, if you were to look straight up into the sky, and it doesn't matter where you are. At midnight on December 31st, look straight up in the sky. At its absolute peak, its height, is it says the North Star, but that's not really it. It's actually Sirius, the dog star. So let me change that. Our dog star, our binary star is at its height. It does not get any happier than that. Then it's up here. You follow a line straight down to Earth, and then you follow a line straight down to the sun. It's a perfect alignment. And this, going from this star coming down, is metaphorically played out with the ball dropping in Times Square. The ball goes from up, coming down. It's a perfect alignment. Otherwise, we should have New Year's in Aries, March 21st, where Passover and Easter happen, or September 21st, when the Jews have their New Year's or solstice. Now, here's an interesting thing, too. Why do they always crash the stock market in Libra? The Panic of 1907, October 1907. The Wall Street crash of 1929, October 24th, 1929. That's the handover date to Scorpio. Black Monday, October 19th, 1987. Friday the 14th mini crash, October 13th, 1989. The stock market downturn of 2002, October 9th, 2002. 10% in most of the world's indices dropped October 24th, 2008. Why? What is Libra? It's the scales. It's the judgment. judgment. It's the They're judging us. These are manufactured yeah. crashes that are all done in the same zodiac sign. Now, here's the interesting thing, too. The largest daily point games are all done in Aries, the Passover. That's when the sun is being heralded. Ah. Oh. Right? Aries and Libra are opposing signs. Roman Catholic Catechism 2116. All forms of divination are to be rejected. Recourse to Satan or demons conjuring up the dead or other practices falsely supposed to unveil the future. 
consulting horoscopes, astrology, palm reading interpretation of omens and lots, the phenomena of clairvoyance and recourse to mediums, all conceal a desire for power over time, history, and in the last analysis, other human beings, as well as a wish to conciliate hidden powers. They contradict the honor, respect, and loving fear that we owe to God alone. So after two days of this, you, you would agree that there's astrology in the Bible, right, Laura? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So why it seems, would the, it seems that way, of course. Yeah. Why would the Roman Catholic why would the Roman Catholics tell you that astrology is evil? Why is it suggested that the Prophet Muhammad stated whoever seeks knowledge from the stars is seeking one of the branches of witchcraft, that of which is inherently forbidden in Islam? Because they tell you it's evil, because they don't want you to see everything that's in it. They don't want you it doesn't benefit them for you to become wise and understand the heavens and see how it works. Yeah. Here's the Phoenix Suns. This is a professional NBA team. The Phoenix is the story of Christ, the sun, a flaming form of life that dies and rises from his ashes. Jesus was the sun who died for three days and came back to life, hence the Phoenix sun. What about the women's Phoenix team? Phoenix Mercury. Mercury is the ruling planet of Virgo, the only woman sign. So how else are things encoded into everyday life and entertainment? Do you remember a movie back in the day with John Travolta and Nicolas Cage called Face Off? My goodness, that's an old movie. Yes. Okay, let me show you how this works. <clears throat> 1990s movie Face Off starring Nicolas Cage and John Travolta. What are their characters' names? Nicolas Cage's character is Caster Troy and his brother is Pollux Troy. Well, those are... So 127. Gemini is the twins, Castor and Pollux Troy. So they literally they literally encode that in there, but however, it, it gets interesting too. Because what is Travolta's character? His name is Sean Archer. Well, who's the archer in yeah. the zodiac? The guy on the bow and the arrow? That's Gemini. Yeah, Sagittarius. Sag Sagittarius, Sagittarius yeah. and Gemini are opposing signs. They are Satans to one another. Yeah. There's a ton of characters in Harry Potter that are named after stars or constellations. You have Draco, which is the dragon Malfoy, Pollux Black, which is Gemini, Sirius Black, which is our dog star, Andromeda Black, Regulus Black, Arcturus Black, Cassiopeia Black, Orion Black, and Cygnus Black. <clears throat> Algol is also known as the Demon Star. It has a long history of evil attached to it. In Batman Begins, the evil character's name is literally Raz al Ghul, or who gets his name from Al Ghul. It's a demon star. That goes into astrology, which is not really what I do. This is astrotheology, but Al Ghul is fixed in Taurus, by the way. Do you remember the Cranberries song, Zombie? Yep. 1990 song for Cranberry Zombie. Here's Dolores O'Riordan, who's painted gold like the sun. And her headdressing represents the rays of the sun, much like Jesus in the crown of thorns. Right? Well, what's the very next what's the very next scene at the beginning of the music video? It's the sun on the cross with the man with the bow and the arrow about to kill it. Right. It, it's all astrology. Yeah. Here we have Katy Perry's Dark Horse video. Here we see the eye of Horus, the Illuminati symbol. Ah, uh, this one. Everybody's seen this one. This is God giving Adam life. Now, if you look at where God is, and let's break this down. If you look at where God is, you'll see um, you'll see he's he's in something, right? Well, it's very interesting that it would happen to look like if you cut a brain in half and open it up. And mm -hmm. here's the other thing, too. If you count the cherubim that are in there, the little angels, there's 12 of them. Like the zodiac oh, signs, there's oh. also twelve cranial nerves in the human brain mm. that you have to study when you go into. You have to understand those. So what this basically is is God coming down into the brain, and if you look at where God is sitting, where He's literally sitting, that's where the pineal gland is. So it's God coming down through the pineal gland with the twelve giving Adam life. That's what Michelangelo is showing you. 500 years ago but that's giving us life so what 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 so that means every day that we are alive that god is giving us life by 
our own. Uh, it's a connection. The pineal gland is a connection to source. That's why they try and so ruin that's, it. With, that's why that's why they try and ruin it with fluoride in the tap water because it calcifies it. Everything. So, yeah. yeah. So God is still, or should we say God, as in how you're seeing this? You know, the pineal gland and the uh, everything. Um, it's still every day little, giving you life. I do have life. an explanation for what God is um, mm. that I can do. It's like a 15 minute presentation. Um, but here we go. Here's another Da Vinci. This is the Last Supper. These are broken down into four three people segments. These are the seasons the three signs, the three signs. First, you have spring, which is the beginning of the year, summer, fall, and winter. On the left, all the way on the left, you see the man in the green. That's Aries. He begins the year. Everything becomes green again. The snow is melting. That's why he's wearing the green. Then if you skip Taurus and you go to the man with the beard holding his hands up, it's Gemini, the twins. He's telling you that he's two. Then after Gemini, you <clears throat> after Gemini, you go to Cancer. And then you go to Leo. Leo is the man. And what is he doing? He's pointing at the woman, Virgo. Leo and Virgo are next to each other in the Zodiac. He's pointing to her Adam's apple. He's showing you that she doesn't have one. And then Jesus is in the middle as the sun. And then you have Libra, the scales, hanging them out like this. This is the 12 Zodiacs. This is what they're showing you right here. Modern day things revolving around astrology. Mermaids, the combination of the man sign Aquarius and the woman sign Virgo and the fish sign Pisces. Aquarius and Pisces are connecting signs. Bull fighting, bull riding, Aquarius the man and Taurus the bull. Jousting, two times Sagittarius. Lion taming, Aquarius the man and Leo the lion. Those are opposing signs. Fishing, Aquarius the man and Pisces the fish. They are connecting signs. Virgo the woman and Pisces the fish. They are opposing signs. Homosexuality in the Bible. Oh boy. Okay. Everybody knows about Leviticus 18.22. However, is it really what is said there? The Greek word arsenokotai shows up in two different versions of the Bible in Greek, but was not translated to mean homosexual until 1946. In the 1800s, the German Bible said men shall not lie with young boys as he does with a woman, for it is an abomination. Leviticus 18.22, same with Leviticus 20.13, young boys. 1 Corinthians, the word arsenokotai, and it's important to me to mention that the Bible was written in Hebrew, the Old Testament at least, but everyone knew at the time if you were an intellect, you wrote and read in Greek. In fact, the New Testament was only written in Greek. It wasn't written in English. It wasn't written in Hebrew. So 1 Corinthians becomes, boy molesters will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you were to grab Martin Luther's original German translation from 1534, they used the word Nabenschander. Nabin is a boy, Schander is molester. The first time homosexual appears in a German translation is 1983. So let me ask you a question. Who benefits from changing child molester to homosexual? The child molesters, right? Yep, absolutely. The child molesters. This is it right here. So when we talk about the Quran, you're familiar with the 72 virgins? Oh, yes, yeah. Okay. Is that, I mean, yeah. I mean, I've not read the Quran, do. but yeah. There's a star here called 70 Virginis, which borders Virgo. There's one virgin in Virgo, so that's 71. Plus the virgin you marry on Earth, that's 72. These are the 72 virgins. It's all astrology. And I do a section on the Bible, too. I do have a book series out, um, which is this. It's called Into the Rabbit Hole series, where I explain this and way 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 more in a story format because you know if you want to tell the truth you have to write fiction nowadays yeah <laughs> i discussed in my book series are gematria etymology numerology astronomy astrology astrotheology out-of-body experiences the akashic records symbology remote viewing religious secrets capstones of the pyramids dna encoding Mystery school channelers, near death experiences, DMT monitoring, lucid dreaming, acoustic levitation, physics and quantum physics, psychotherapy, psychology, 
spiritual guides, and shared dreaming and crystal technology. Conspiracies that not many people know about, corruption and secret societies. It's the Into the Rabbit Hole series. That, and I have a kid's book for 6 to 11 where I explain the Zodiac for children with my astrologer Priscilla. So again, my point once again is not that those ancient people told literal stories and we are now smart enough to take them symbolically, but that they told them symbolically and we are now dumb enough to take them literally. Yeah. And, well, no, that, that's pretty much it. That's my second part. I do, I do need to use the bathroom again real quick. Yeah, so. no, go for it. Yeah, that's fine. Um, if any of you guys have got questions, I've written some of the questions down that I will ask, but if you've got any more, drop them now, um, and uh, I'll put them to Micah. Um, let me just try and bring this up. That's better. Um, now you can see me closer. <laughs> see my wrinkles. Sorry, I'm just talking rubbish now, waiting. <laughs> I hope you got, I've all enjoyed it. I have. It's really fascinating. Uh, what is the Stone of Destiny and why is it in Scotland? Do you want me to ask that question? Yeah. No. Won't be long. It's it's interesting. I do find things like this interesting, and I'm open to lots of different other, you know, opinions. Gerard, you and I need to do a live together about what you know. I think that would be good. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, right. Yeah, I'll ask that question. It was fascinating. So we've got a few questions. Sure. First of all is, do you know anything about the Stone of Destiny and why it's in Scotland? Is that the Blarney Stone? The what stone? Is that the Blarney Stone? I'm not sure. Edinburgh. Do you know, Reginald, is that that stone? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll ask. I'll wait for uh, him. Um, what did you think the firmament was in part one? Are you asking me? What do you, yeah. Do you know what? The, what do you think the firmament is in part one? I think we went over the firmament. In part, we went over the firmament in part one. It's the three-day time period. It's the dividing lines between the zodiac signs. Is when that's the energy it. Over. That's why it says. Okay. That's why it says God. Um, the the firmament shows God's handiwork. Right. Um, you mentioned in the Bible it's got psychedelics. Yes. So where would they be? What what sort of the story of, of, of Moses seeing the uh, God in the bush? When the when the Muslims when, when the Muslims when the Jews are in Egypt and they're walking around, they don't have any food or anything. God feeds them manna. What's the story of manna? What does manna even mean? Manna in Hebrew means what's this? And the way it was described is they would walk around and they would point at the ground and they would say manna was described as a small round white thing they would eat it and they would talk to god it's a hallucinogenic shroom in fact there's a great book there's a great book out there called the mushroom and the cross by john allegro that, that, that breaks this down better than ever i could wow i'm writing that down mushroom and the cross uh so um one other we've got right so what's your thoughts on the pyramids that's all i've got um they're ancient uh energy portals they, they are ancient energy portals in fact um they're missing the capstones i kind of um take liberties with where the capstones are and what they actually do in my second book in, in into the rabbit hole series um but the cat the, the, the pyramids are energy portals there was a man in the set. You can look this up on search engine too. Man builds a pyramid on his farmland, right? And he puts a bunch of food to grow in the pyramid and then outside of the pyramid and everything. The food in the pyramid grew four times as fast. No. Mm -hmm. 
This was in America, by the way. This was a southern farmer that did that. He put a pyramid up there. Pyramids are energy portals. That's what they are. They're energy portals. Um, what, so can you just remind me what immaculate conception is to you that's in the Bible? Like, you know, uh, Mary was and Jesus was an immaculate conception. I mean, what, right. What? It's, it's without um, without sex. Yeah. Is so it, how does that happen? Because it, it just it can't. It, it can't. It's the story of it, it goes back to it goes to the story of um of Osiris and Isis to make Horus. Osiris got broken down into a million different pieces. They put him back together, but they couldn't find his penis. Right. right? That's the story. Um, these are all immaculate conceptions. Virgo is the virgin in the sky. It's star poetry. Yeah. That's why it has to be a virgin. So um, does the sun have 13 cycles of the natural sun and moon cycles, but there's 12 signs of the zodiac? Some people are saying that the calendar well, that's is That's actually not, not technically true because there is technically 13 signs. There's a sign called Ophiuchus, which is the serpent bearer. It's a man holding a basically a box with the snake, a serpent in it. There's a biblical phrase that says uh, the serpent um, will bite the heel of the horse and the rider will fall off well if you look at ophiuchus because ophiuchus sits between scorpio and sagittarius you look at the snake in the box the snake's head is facing sagittarius the horse so the snake would literally take a bite out of the horse metaphorically for horse's legs and the rider would fall off this is just this is just poetry this is celestial poetry mapping out the heavens interesting uh one more question that i've written down what is what is god to you I think can i do my presentation it's about 15 minutes long yes of course okay i'm gonna have to present again I don't, wait actually i have to open this first Hold on. i guess my main purpose is that there's nothing to fear so do you see this right now did you put it up yep so it's up right now, right? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna start. This is from my first book that I wrote when I was 28. Into the Rabbit Hole Beneath the Veil. This is the first book if you were to buy it. And guys, debunkmywork.com has all my videos, all my all 62 ancient holy texts that I've broken down. Uh, it has all my books and it has a way to contact me and all my social media too. Scientists, <laughs> so this was in my first book that I wrote when I was 28. Scientists have determined through completion of the genome project that humans are roughly 99.7% identical wise DNA. Two penguins are more genetically different than you and I are. Whomever finds this, I want you to try this experiment. Write your name down. Write your two parents' names down above yours. Now you have four grandparents, eight great grandparents, and you go on. Let's go back 35 generations. It roughly takes you back to the year 840 AD. You will have 137 billion people. The number of ancestors list reminds me of a story of the servant summoned by the pharaoh. The pharaoh was pleased with how the servant was doing and wanted to reward him. Serving you is all I desire, sir, the servant insisted. No, I insist you ask for something, anything you desire, the pharaoh said back. And this went back and forth until the pharaoh got mad and threatened punishment. After thinking long and hard, the servant seeing a chessboard in front of him said, On day one, I want one piece of rice. On the second, I want two. Each day you will double the previous days until the chessboard is complete. I will place a grain on each square representing each day completed. The first day the pharaoh sent his finest servant in a parade with a golden pouch to deliver the grain. The amount grew exponentially and halfway through the board there was no more grain in the land. The pharaoh summoned the servant back in. Your highness, all I ever wanted to do was serve you, replied the servant. The servant, although now the wealthiest man in all the land, had retained his hubris. It was there that the pharaoh learned not to question humility or assume that giving material gifts as tokens of appreciation were all that mattered. As for the servant, he continued to work for the pharaoh. However, he had taken all the rice and continued to feed all the poor and the homeless until the day of his death. So the point of both these stories is that it's simple math. In fact, it's how cells divide in your body and mass produce. The reason I stopped at this particular time, 840 AD, by the way, is because it's roughly how many people it's been calculated that have ever lived on planet Earth, 140 billion people. Remember, 840 AD brings you to 137 billion. 
Even if we take the Bible literally, we still need to get to October 23rd, 4004 BCE. We are in a bit of a pickle here. There needs to be a way to bridge the gap, and this is where the pedigree collapse theory comes in. The concept states that there is no other explanation other than a whole lot of incest. Sometimes, like in the case of the Kentucky Blue people, um, which is an inbred family in Kentucky in the United States, and they're, they have a rare genetic disease where their skin is actually blue, and because they continue to inbreed, they're still blue. There are no branches on the family tree. Sometimes, like in the banking or royal families, it is to preserve money or special genetics. Based on our DNA, geneticists say that the farthest point one can be on this planet from another is 50th cousins. Also, if your mom was from country X and your dad was from country X as well, there is a 20% chance they share a common ancestor within 10 generations back. So what does it all mean? Well, in a nutshell, it means that far enough back we are all related and all one and we should start to act like it. Let's explore different cognitive viewpoints. How about from a creationist then? Well, we all came from Adam and Eve, technically Eve from Adam's rib, and even more technically Adam was made from mud and dirt from the world God created. How about from an evolutionist then? Let's start with the Big Bang. Let alone the fact that all the material we came from an infinitesimally dense singularity, and no one seems to want to explain where that singularity came from, but let's slide to that slide. We were all one at one point. How about the idea of source energy then? If our souls are like crumbs off a cookie, the cookie being source God, whatever you want to call it, then we are all connected multidimensionally. And upon death, it will be a vibrational change of frequency back to it. Let's try one last one. Aliens placing us here. You would still have to account for the first humans and how we all came about. You don't just magically have a species, poof, we're here, or do you? If so, who created the first test group of people? Secondly, what about the first spirit consciousness of DNA that evolved this level of higher thinking? There's a big difference between what I am writing and a monkey who's fed up with people taking pictures of him and throwing his shit at them. Still, though, the point is that some point things had to come back to a singularity in the sense of one source and a point. Humans are so quick to think of the end of the world, things ending, but what they can't do is think about the beginning or if there was something from the beginning. And that's just a little short snippet of my first book. And it was my first book. I wrote it 11 years ago, and it was pretty close. But if we look to prove God, the sun tells the hour of the day, the moon tells the day of the month, the zodiac tells the month of the year. It's a perfect calendar. To me, aside from the fact that DNA is a computer blueprint for life and that we have a perfect calendar in the heavens, in the middle of nowhere in the Milky Way galaxy, there is a perfect calendar for us to figure out. Those are fingerprints of God. So we've defined God as existing. But where is God? Well, it must be beyond space and time, beyond the 11 dimensions of string theory. Ask any religious person to define God, and they will tell you God is infinite. And that is what all religious people will say. And here is the thing, Laura. If God is infinite, how can something exist outside of infinity? It can't. The biggest lie we've been taught is that we are separate from God, that we should fear it, that we are all separate from it. We are a part of it. Many of you have children. They are literally half of your DNA, so they are a part of you, but you experience them subjectively outside your body. So is with God with us. A piece of God comes down in what we call consciousness into a body, and we feel separate from it. We are all God experiencing itself subjectively. If you are infinite in everything, nothing can exist outside of you, not space, not time. So what are you going to do with everything? You're gonna have a, if you're everything, you're going to have a discussion with someone, learn something new. You can't. The reason for creation is that you trick yourself into thinking you're not God and experience yourself subjectively. We are a species with amnesia living in a simulation. Einstein said about God that he believes in the God of Spinoza. Baruch Spinoza was a thinker who said that God doesn't want you huddled in churches and temples in the cold, praying as loudly as you can with others, praying the loudest. Jesus said that those who give for publicity or pray the loudest, they have their reward. What that basically means is the ones who are the loudest are the ones who are doing things publicly. That's that's their reward, is, is the adoration, the adulation. It has nothing to do with, with true charity. If you mm. pray, pray by yourself. God Spinoza wants you to go to the mountains and the lake and enjoy what I am created for you and worship that way. The biggest lie that we have ever been collectively taught is that we need to fear and worship. When we are mm. a baby in our mother's womb, 
The mother being the supreme being is aware of the baby. However, the baby is not aware of the mother from its vantage point, as is with us, with God. We are each a piece of God, unaware of the whole because we're in the middle of it. If you've ever listened to Alan Watts talk, Jesus Christ knew he was God. So wake up and find out eventually who you really are. In our culture, of course, they'll say you're crazy and you're blasphemous. And they'll either put you in jail or in the nut house, which is pretty much the same thing. However, if you wake up in India and tell your friends and relations, my goodness, I've just discovered that I'm God, they'll laugh and say, oh, congratulations. At last you found out. And here's Nargis Allegria. Become absolute. You have to accept that you are God. That there is only God. You have to admit that others are gods too. But if your love does not stretch that far and you are blinded by your shadow, don't complain that liberation did not happen yet. Why should freedom reveal itself to someone who refuses to embody love? When you are ready to perceive God in everything, you have opened a gate, a gate that opens the possibility of being eaten raw by the absolute. P.S. Everything you hate is God, because there is only God. Anything you think that should not be happening is God, because there is only God. Realize there only being God, and it will prevail, first in your experience, then in the collective. They tell you this in the Bible, Isaiah 45.7. God, I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Everything in existence is a part of God. The good, the bad, all of it. Religious people can't admit they are God. Only Jesus and God are God. But how can something exist outside the infinite? String theory used to be the most cutting-edge quantum physics, and it talks about 11 dimensions to make it work. Now the most cutting-edge quantum physics states that the universe is conscious. Well, welcome to the party. Incidentally, Hermes talked about string theory 6,000 years ago. The third hermetic principle is the principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything vibrates, and that's exactly what string theory rediscovered 6,000 years later. But they haven't read the quantum hermetica. Your God experiencing itself subjectively through amnesia. The book of Thomas saying, split a piece of wood and I am there. Raise up a stone and you will find me. God is everything, the wood, the stone. This actually now makes sense. In the Quran, 532, that is why we decreed for the children of Israel that whoever kills a soul without it being guilty of manslaughter or corruption on the earth is as though he has killed all mankind, and whoever saves a life is as though he has saved all mankind. We are all one. We are all God. This makes sense now, too. Matthew 25, 40, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. We are all one. This makes sense now. We are all God. Therefore, we are all infinite and eternal. When you realize you are eternal and you are God, just as the enlightened have realized in the past, this is what Buddha figured out under the fig tree. This is what they're all trying to tell you. You get filled with love. You no longer fear death and you're driven to love one another. Not because of fear or punishment like the religious. The biggest mystery of life is sitting in front of you in plain sight. The religious texts allude to it, but they never come out and say it. You also have to understand is that when you come to this realization, that feeling you get is the exact same feeling that religious people get when they become saved. Only they are ruled by fear. This is why it's so hard for them to let go of their holy books as literal texts. We are all God interacting with itself. We are eternal and infinite and powerful. We use DMT and hallucinogenics to see other realms and connect with God. We meditate and lose the voice, to lose the voice in our head so that we can become one with the all. This is the secret of life. The meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to give it away. Hmm. That's really interesting. Um. So where is it? Where would the Holy Grail? When they talk about the Holy Grail, is that inside us as well? The Holy Grail is 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 the um, the woman's vagina. Oh, it's, hello. It's the Holy Grail. That's 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 the Holy Grail. Um, is let that me actually show creates? you. Let me actually show you something real quick. Bear with me just one moment. Mm -hmm. Um, they personify this as Mother Mary. They personify this as Mother Mary. Let me just open this up, and then I'll share this, and then you can share it with everyone. <sighs> okay. Beautiful. I have it now. Okay. So let me just go here. Mother Mary 
is the divine feminine. Mother Mary is is basically the vagina. Um. You yeah. See this. I um. Seven Look on the right. This is how they depict Mother Mary. In fact, when I posted this on Facebook. Oh my God. When I posted this on Facebook and said that Mother Mary was the holy vagina, the holy grail, I did this picture on the right. This is Mother Mary. This is Mother Mary. She's the holy vagina. That's what it is. It's, it's the portal that brings life into this world. This is why the Egyptians yeah. were so absolutely obsessed with women. And then the Jews come around and write the Old Testament where suddenly women are the reason for sin. That's not it at all. The ancients used to worship women. And the picture on the right, like I said, Facebook actually told me I posted porn. And now I can't like post in groups for 30 days. <laughs> okay, maybe you should take it off then before I get taken down for this. Oh my goodness, I've never, well, I've never, <laughs> oh, well, Whew. this is, um, yeah. Everything is spiritual, everything sure. is sexual, everything is spiritual, I told you. Wow. That's just kind of blown me away. <laughs> wow. They um, show it to you, right, it's asking. right in your face, Laura. It's right in your face yeah. and people just don't know what they're looking at. I've got a new name now for mine, Mother Mary. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, what do you think is after death? I think you, I think, well, there's two universal laws. Um, there's laws on your planet um, for how things work, do, do the atmosphere, you know, I'm not even going to go into gravity. Basically, just the way that things work, there's laws that govern the realm. But they're, they're different because if you go to the moon, you can jump really high and here you can't, you know, there's, there's reasons for that. But there's two universal and by universal, I mean through the universe and maybe the multiverse laws. The first is mathematics. That is the left brain uh, logical uh, way that everything is set out. That is the law. And the right brain feminine is karma. Karma is actually very real. This is why the elites have to show us what they're doing in Super Bowl halftime shows or things of that nature. In, uh, because they have to show us. Because if they don't show us, then they can't offset their karma. Because they believe in it. Whether you guys believe it or not is irrelevant. They believe in it. Mm -hmm. And karma is yeah. very real. You've done a thing about um, the hand signs that people say is Masonic. And like you spoke about. Um, the Illuminati. The, the Illuminati yeah. and the Masons are there. If people want to know what the Masons truly are, and the Illuminati truly is, go to YouTube and type in KRS-1 talks Illuminati and Freemasonry. And he explains what they both are. So simple. Because people are misled and confused about what things truly are. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to put that down. So, um, we should be sun worshiping is that right because that's what they used it's to do it's not that we should be sun worshiping it's what it's what all the holy books are i mean in in a sense we do give praise to the sun every day because without it we'd be dead in nine minutes yeah right and i love the sun i absolutely right? love the sun it's the it's the light of the world it's god's only begotten son yeah, absolutely. Um, so we've got that. We've got that. And, uh, you know, you talk about churches. There was a um, a preacher that said that churches are actually not holy grounds if they are built on, on graveyards. And many of the most famous big churches actually have bodies underneath the church which actually makes it a ritual ground well the vatican does all the popes are under there mm. and there's many churches the word that church, go and pray the word church goes back to a middle age word called kirk and that goes back to a roman goddess named circe and that goes back to a greek goddess 
I'm sorry, Ceres is the Roman and Circe is the Greek. Do you know who Circe was? This is the root of the word church. Circe was a goddess who used to invite men, hypnotize them, invite them into their home, into her home after hypnotizing them and would eat them. That's the root of the word church. And that's what they do. They invite you in and they eat you. And then, in some instances, you're praying over dead people's bones, which is actually a ritual. Uh, and in fact, I think it's in so the people that follow the Bible, literally, it's in there that it shouldn't be happening. Um, so what do you actually think, doing all this, um, the fact that they're trying to hide all this from us and, you know, what do you think we are actually capable of? And, you know, we're being... All these esoteric sciences. All... First of all, the word occult. People are scared of the word occult. Occult is a Latin word that means hidden. And that's all that this stuff is. It's hidden. It's occult. Mm. When they say something's occult, they mean it's hidden. Not that it's evil. Um... All these esoteric mm -hmm. sciences, or, or minds are, 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 they don't want you to know how powerful your emotions are and how powerful your mind is. That's why they try and fluoridate the hell out of you in mm -hmm. your brain. Which, by the way, guys, if you stop taking fluoridated toothpaste and you stop drinking tap water and you stop um, all the kind of things that would calcify your pineal gland and you start taking um, raw iodine, uh, that will decalcify it for you. It'll take time, surely. It's not. Yeah. Good. It's going to take time. There's so, other things that um, you can do, for example, like yeah, you meditate. But if you don't, if you don't like to meditate, there's another form of meditation. It's called fire gazing. Go out 30 minutes as the sun is rising, and 30 minutes as the sun is setting, and just stare at the sun. Mm. Um, that helps with your pineal gland. Um, you can buy a candle, preferably non-scented, preferably one wick too. Um, mm. And just stare at the flame for 20 minutes. Your heart rate will go down. Your blood pressure will go down. Um, you can zen and zone out. You know, it's a form of medication. Meditation. You medicate. Yeah. You were saying that God is everything. So we are a piece of the mm -hmm. creator. In, and God is good and God is bad. And so we are all gods. It's really, really hard to... I mean, I, I, you know, I agree that we're all connected and everything, but it just, you know, when you feel that you're a piece of these evil people that are doing wrong in the world, that's really quite hard for me to, to digest. I mean, I don't it's know about everybody experience. else. It's just an experience. You have to remember, good does not exist without evil. There will always be evil in this world. Yeah. There will always be yeah. evil because the polarity of the two reflect each other. There is no good without bad. There is no bad without good. That goes with everything. Everything is binary. We have a binary star, Sirius. Everything is binary. And if you think about it, how could this be a part of God, right? Well, if you know string theory that everything vibrates, everything is a form of life, right? At, this, at, the, at the microscopic level, this is vibrating. Mm. Everything vibrates. Everything. They'll tell you God is infinite. Okay, then explain to me how something can be infinite. Explain to me how, if it's not hell, which is winter... You know, Satan or Lucifer doesn't get me because we've already explained that. Baphomet's nothing to worry about. Explain to me how when I die, I have to stand beside, in front of something, making me separate from them. Therefore, mm. God is not infinite. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Um, may you ask him, does he know the knowledge of the ark and how it opens up your pineal gland and how it repairs... And how it can repair your body with frequencies. Do you know anything about this? I'm not sure what she means. About, uh, what this person means about the arc. Um, can you be a, a bit more um, specific about the arc? Right. I mean, I didn't get into this real too, but the 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 story of Noah and the ark um, that is ripped from the Epic of Gilgamesh. That goes to a Sumerian story, thousand years, more than a thousand years before it, uh, complete mm. with putting man. Um, in a, build an ark, get the animals, and then at the end, releasing a bird uh, to see if it comes back to see if the water has receded. This is all in Gilgamesh. Hmm. They're recycling and, the same story. It's all the same exact story. Yeah. And do you believe in spirit guides? Sure. So, okay. So what, what are they? Um, 
I'm not too big into that, to be honest with you. I, um, I don't usually get what we would call supernatural things happening to me. Yeah. Um, but, um, I mean, they come in, 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 in waves. Like if you ever see like one, one, one or two, two, two or three, 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 you know, there's certain things, yeah. little signs that you can follow that, that let you know you're doing the right thing. Um, toroidal harmonic energy activation resonance circle. That's the arc. I'm not familiar with that, but I would love no. to have a conversation with this person. Roxanne, drop a message. Yeah, with, uh, Roxanne, friend me on Facebook and let's talk about it. Excellent. Any other questions? It's been really, really interesting. Absolutely love all this. Uh, you know, and, you know, when you speak about Jesus, um, I've been told by a, a few people now, not just right. one, um, that Jesus never died. Jesus existed, but um, he went to India. Uh, where well, you see he... that in some of the Gnostic texts. And in fact, I've shown you how a lot of the Old Testament and the New Testament is, is based on, uh, on Eastern philosophy, too. Yep, yep. And he studied medicine, natural medicine, and, and then he came back and the Romans didn't like him. So Jesus is the real man. The Romans didn't like him healing people because he'd learned natural medicine. Sounds a bit like what we're experiencing now. And they wanted to kill him, but it wasn't actually Jesus that died on the cross, I have been told, because this is local. This is what the locals know in that area. They've known this for generation and generations. Uh, he went to India and he lived his life in India and he actually had children. So it is that's that comes from um, people that have lived, um, you know, um, in Lebanon. That's where this comes from, and they all know in that area that uh, yeah. So they have a different belief there. It's still a belief. Um, the earliest, the earliest, the absolute earliest that we have, close to the time of Jesus' death. Is the gospel of mark or it's the works of josephus mm. which is still imagine for a second right now i don't know what you believe about 9 11. okay but imagine for, for for a second right now that somebody who was born now is writing the true history of 9 11 in like 15 <sighs> 20 years Okay. Yeah. Now, how accurate of a life description would that be? Mm. Well, it we depends. Found, we found King Laura. Who was it? Was it? Was it? Oh God! Who was the king you guys found under a supermarket? Oh, you're not talking about um, Gregory Hallett. He's not a king. He's fake. Who, who are you talking about? A king found under a supermarket? I have no idea. Does yeah. anyone know? Does anyone know what king it's Henry? In England. It is in England, so I thought you might know. But yeah, they, they found is a king it? in the parking lot, under the parking lot. They, 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 you're never going to find the bones of Jesus. You're never going to find the, the bones of, of Solomon. You're never going to find any of this. What you will find is inscriptions from that age mentioning them, but that doesn't prove that they were real. Someone said Richard III. That was it. Thank you. You found him in like a, a parking lot. Like they dug up a parking lot and they were like, oh. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. King Richard. How funny. How absolutely funny. Um, Ed, do we have any other questions? I've wrote as much as I can down and I've asked everything that I've picked up. So really the stars and the sky are our clock, our calendar. Um, and when you when you use these keywords and you plug them in, you'll find. And the other thing that I do is I go through the the holy text book by uh, even though I go by book by book, I do it chapter by chapter. So I'll do chapter yeah. one, find all the connections, stop, outline it, go to chapter two. That's a new slide. You know, I don't want to blend it in. I want to show you. And it makes patterns three, four, five, six, seven signs in a row. It's mapping out the heavens. It's literally just retelling the stories. That's just crazy. That is just crazy. Do you not look like, do you not sit? I sit and think, you know, we're inside something. I mean, come on, there's definitely, there's got to be more out there. We are inside something. 
and uh and part of me you know i'd like to know the truth but then um you know once you know everything then what's the point of of existence so it's a journey of of learning um paul morris i think he, you covered the 10 commandments already he covered the 10 commandments earlier so what's the point in knowing everything because once you know if someone if someone was to sort of come up to you and just let me put it to you let me put it to you this way laura i teach one slice of one science out of 11 sciences in the bible just think of how much is in there yeah Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So it's a, it's an experience. I suppose the purpose to your life is whatever you want it to be. Yeah. yeah. And uh, whatever you do. You, so do you believe in the law of, um, actually they used to call it the secret, the secret come out, which the uh, secret is I believe. Watered down, the secret, the, the one with the little red stamp on it. Yeah. The yeah. watered down version of spirituality. Yeah, so what you put out comes back, but you've got to manifest it. And I think, you know, there's a lot in there that is, um, I, when I read that book, I thought, well, this is a lot in here that makes sense, but I found it very materialistic based. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all about money and right. uh, what you can have. They don't want have. you to realize how, how powerful your thoughts are because your thoughts manifest reality. That's what the tarot is. That's what the tarot is. You pick cards, right? You pick five. Incidentally, the tarot, the Torah, they're basically the same word. There's five books in the Pentateuch in the Old Testament, five books in the Torah. You pull five cards in the tarot. You pull the card, you manifest, and you flip to reveal. That's what it basically is. All these ancient sciences are teaching the same thing. Um, in fact, the word abracadabra means um, I will... Um, I will speak into existence. That's why in the Bible they say, and God was, and the word was with God, and God was the word. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is why they teach you spelling, spelling in school, mm -hmm. because you're learning how to be an alchemist. You're, you're learning how to manifest things. Gospel, go spell. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, yeah. Um, decoding. So any more, yeah, the law of attraction, that's the one. So what you put out comes back. But you have to truly believe it and feel it. And, you know, I think it's it's understanding how to sort of, you know, align yourself, your thinking. Right. If you would like, we can come back and do a part three where I can show you my presentation where not only because I kind of stuck with the Bible here, I will show you one example of astrotheology from every ancient holy text from the Sumerians to the Quran. I have a presentation on that. Yeah, that would be absolutely interesting. We can uh, line that up. I, yeah, I'd be um, interested. Um, have to. Part three would be great. People are saying already. Would they, Would you all like a part three? And and probably just, you know, it's, it's good to have these open-minded discussions. It's outside the box thinking. And everyone can take bits away and uh right. you know do their own research you guys, if you, you want to go to my website debunkmywork.com i have all yeah. my 62 presentations i have um all my social media you have a way to contact me links to all my books yeah i found it so interesting absolutely interesting it gave me a different perspective on the um astrology as well and it's not the astrology now the thing is there's got to be something um you know with because we, we're getting all this stupid astrology in the papers and magazines that's why and they I dumb it that, down they dumb it down and tell you it's evil they do that on purpose yeah but to to take away oh and it's all based on you're going to meet someone you're going to try why did, why did jp morgan jp morgan the guy who created jp morgan right say that millionaires don't need astrology but billionaires do interesting yeah use uh yeah that's very good point isn't it yeah so it's something to keep an eye on isn't it in the magazines it's not true astrology you're right it's not but i think it's done on purpose to take you away from the true yeah astrology which is a very fascinating subject and so so if you go and do people do their astrology charts is there something in that 
a hundred percent. I can hook you up with my uh, astrologer, Priscilla. Um, oh, she literally fantastic. tells she tells me things that happen days in advance, and it no always way. yeah no she what? she can see things in a chart like the way that I can just look at a biblical scripture and and see the patterns. She can look at a chart and do the same thing. I would love to introduce you to. Please, that would be amazing. I'd be really mm -hmm. interested. You could in even that. do your birth chart too if you're interested, and you'll be blown yes. away. She's the best I've ever found. Wow. Yes, please. Yes, please. And uh, you know, and we can talk about that. Um, that. There's obviously now people that would like their charts done. So if maybe if she done something, if we done something publicly, and then to put it out there, could she do that publicly with me? Do you think? If, if you yeah. want her to do your chart and then read it publicly. Yeah, yeah, we should do it publicly. I'm You're going to put yourself know. out there like that? Okay. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I've got nothing to hide. It's me. <laughs> okay. okay. I, will, I, will, yes. um, I will introduce you very shortly. That would be absolutely amazing. And then, then people can see her work firsthand and my reaction as well. <laughs> that mm -hmm. would be great. Yeah. No, it's been brilliant. I have to say, um, I've got no more, definitely a part three, people are saying absolutely definitely a part three and everyone's interested in uh, meeting. It's because the mainstream were not allowed to discuss signs. Laura, ask him what he thinks of Flat Earth. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, well, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. I mean, Santos is a Flat Earther, isn't he? And he mm -hmm. do a lot of his, uh, yeah. So we'll leave that one for a different uh, day because um, it's not relevant right now. But uh, I'm just going to leave that. Any more questions? No, that's it. Right, I think we'll end it here and we'll look forward to a part three. Um, I'll just answer which... it this way. I'll answer it this way. Neptune, Jupiter... Uranus and there's and Venus are all gas giants. They're not made out of what we call material like Earth or Mars is. So why do they they're gas giants? So why are they always shown as perfect circles? Well, I'm a flat earther and everyone knows this. And uh, we we even had David Weiss on last night. I know I noticed that. David Weiss is He's 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 very good. Yeah. So I uh, and and you know as people have as you've managed to do the research and you know put things together when it comes to the Bible and everything, we equally have many brilliant minds out there doing the same with flat Earth and debunking a lot of the the things like for instance you mentioned Mars. Well, they've it's been completely debunked. There is there are no planets that we can go to or land on or be on other than here and the suns and moons uh, are not planets they're just wandering well uh, they could be suns and moons of other realms um, and we've got ours there's a lot of theory behind it but definitely can't land on it especially when you see what they do in the CGI um, so if earth flat so is the sun no I'm not going to go there but yeah so that's what um, I'm a very big believer. So when you speak about the um, different planets and everything, um, as we know them as, like you say, balls of gases or whatever, but it's all open to uh, a lot of discussions. Um, but it's equally very interesting when you're talking about it on a clock level, like on a astrological level because they don't move they only they you know the stars and the, you know that system the plat they don't move they're all fixed they just move round like a clock and that's must be something to go by i think because it hasn't changed in in millions of years or however long we've been here i don't know it's never changed so it, there has to be something in that. So, yeah. Right, I'm going to end it here. So we'll do a part three. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining and uh, listening. If you've got any questions, I've put the website on this as well. And uh, if you want to message 
uh, Micah directly, please do. And just uh, and, Facebook, guys. Yep. And uh, they yeah. They answer everyone. And thank you so much. I really do enjoy this. I really do enjoy this. And if you've enjoyed it, please share it with friends and uh, let's uh, get other people thinking. Maybe we can. Pop. Maybe we could do part three while it's still fresh in people's minds too. Yeah, we'll do it next week because I've got okay, a beautiful. few lines. And yeah. I'll introduce you. I'll introduce you to Priscilla, and then you can uh, you can book a reading with her, and then you you guys can do your own live. Okay, that would be fantastic. That would be uh, very interesting. Right, much love to you guys, and we'll see you next week for part three. Uh, don't go away, Micah. And uh, yeah, and uh, but I'll be on again in a few days. Right, bye for now.